listening to TV Burp, the show in which we take a look at the week's TV. Here, did you see Antiques Roadshow on Sunday? It's a wonderful piece. W where did you get it? Well, I was holding it in trust for the princes. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. The Queen knows all about it, yeah. She came through for me in the end. <laughs> Three hours she had me in there with her. Uh, uh, so, so, Ten, mi ten minutes she had me there with her, yeah. <laughs> he, he changed the flag, you know, Earl Spencer. Oh, yes. And I don't care what he says, I never laid a finger on Barrymore. I'll give you two pounds fifty for it. I'll take it, cos I am a rock. And I am a nylon. <laughs> See? The Queen spoke in black and white, while the Princess spoke in colour. Yeah, Paul, mate, you want to check on the tracking on your TV, all right? <laughs> Maybe we need something to boost the signal. And after the kidnap scare, baby Brooklyn relaxes at home. <laughs> now, ITV runs the cruise ship. The food's fantastic, <laughs> great facilities, <laughs> and the entertainment is first class. Here's the very talented Penny with pianist Queenie. Oh, Careful, no. Penny, I think you might have started a bit low there. <laughs> Might have gone a bit high now. Now you've gone too high. <laughs> Not long ago, Rick Waller joined the ship. Here he is in action. Now, he's a big lad, but there are reasons for this, as he explained on Celebrity Fat. Sorry, Fit Club. <laughs> I've always had a very large structure. <laughs> if, you, if you stripped all the flesh off me right now, you'd, you'd have, like, a massive skeleton. Quite frankly, I mean, I, I am structurally very substantial. <laughs> We've got hold of some x-rays, <laughs> which actually prove that, basically, he's pretty much solid bone <laughs> covered in a very fine layer of fat. <laughs> He's basically highly sophisticated coral. <laughs> I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm enjoying my nightly fix of bargain hunt. Hello, bargain hunters. I'm Davy Dickinson. I am, you know. You know I am. I'm Davy Dickinson. And I'm out and about looking for a bargain. Oh, I like your shoes, mate. I'm having some of that, bargain hunters. <laughs> Now that's a bargain! <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up looking like they're stereos, though? <laughs> <laughs> now, Britain's favourite show business doctor, sorry, uh, second favourite show business doctor, <laughs> <laughs> Robert Winston. He's back with a new series, Human Instincts, in which he offers us uncanny insights into the workings of the human body. Winston's wisdom. Food is our fuel, and without it we die. Winston's wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I preferred him when he was on 70s sitcom Mind Your Language. Uh, just uh, take a note of all your names, nationalities and occupations. <laughs> Oh, a packet of Tic Tacs, tin of dog food, some chicken nuggets and a bottle of bleach. I don't know. That's the last time I play Win the Adverts. <laughs> ah, bargain hunt. I'm David Dickinson and I am the hunter. Oh, I'm having some of that. <laughs> Take 
There hasn't been a decent new road safety campaign recently, has there? Not since Alvin Stardust. <laughs> Just look at them. <laughs> they must be crackers. <laughs> hey, you must be out of your tiny minds. <laughs> when you cross the road, always use the green cross code. Great. See you, girls. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. <laughs> you see, we had Alvin back then. But you know they've got a new campaign coming out next year. New bloke, yeah. Here's a sneak preview. <laughs> Don't just run across the f***ing <laughs> low. Look up the f***ing listen to all your cars. I mean, I love you dearly, but you're all f***ing <laughs> mad. Winston's Wisdom. And it's not just babies that find bitter food disgusting. We all do. Winston's <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> Now, whilst BBC Two are running Great Britons, we're running our own version. Ladies and gentlemen, it's TV Burp's Great Kittens. Great Kittens! <laughs> and still at number one is Smudge. Oh. A two-week-old tabby. <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> but remember, there's still everything to play for. Please send in your clips of kittens with your reasons why you want them saved. I, I mean, I mean, why you want them to win. <laughs> <laughs> right to the following address. P.O. Box number 13048, London, W10, 6WQ. That's Great Kittens! Great Kittens! <laughs> <laughs> Coronation Street now, and poor Sarah Tilsley was in a car crash. Oh. Oh. Sarah Tilsley, or Chi-Chi, as she's known now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she was so ill, she could hardly eat her bamboo shoots. <laughs> I don't know. Sarah in the crash, Audrey in a fire. It's therefore been necessary for Coronation Street to issue the following severe gale warning. <laughs> to my family, I'm going to be very, very annoyed. And really, uh, you're not trying to kill my mum, are you, Richard? No, I didn't get back upstairs to bed. A severe gale warning there. <laughs> but you know that there's been a lot of fire on the streets this week. Everybody get outside now! It's just warm with the heat. Now stand back, I'm going to kick it in. Can you see? Sure. But that fire on EastEnders was predicted in last week's TV Quick, What's on TV and TV Times. You see, if you take the covers and arrange them like so, hey, there's a nice little story of the dangers of playing with matches. Look, there's the first one, TV Quick. Oh, it's got the matches there. Time to die, Mo. <laughs> it's time to die. <laughs> I'm on fire, Mo. I'm on fire, Mo. Oh, I'm dead, Mo. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead, Mo. Mm. Yeah, he's... Uh... He died in a fire and then she cremated him. Nice one. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's time now. Yes, the whole Slater household went up, all the clothes were ruined. Yeah, he did over £12 worth of damage. <laughs> time for this week's TV Highlight of the Week. It's the Café Fire on Emmerdale, and Viv and Steph doing a kind of stars in your eyes at Café Hope. <laughs> Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Viv Windsor and Lorraine Chase. <laughs> that takes the number of fires at Emmerdale up to 23. In fact, in the 30 years since it's been on the box, the tiny village of Emmerdale has suffered 23 fires, 39 deaths, 17 car crashes, and a plane flying into it. <laughs> It's like a kind of northern Bermuda Triangle, basically. <laughs> but, you know, despite this appalling record on health and safety, just a couple of weeks ago, look what Viv was up to at the cafe. She's taking the batteries out of the smoke alarm! <laughs> it's gonna be a fire! <laughs> I thought it was high time someone gave him a little bit of advice on health and safety. see, country folk are more prone to fires because of their clothes. Anoraks, wax jackets, straw hats, and of course bushy sideburns are all highly inflammable. <laughs> ah. Here we are. 
Ah, Viv. You're not the stalker, are you? <laughs> no. Well, not round here, anyway. So I'm with health and safety. Very sorry to hear about your cafe burning down like that. Oh, I know. The old thing went up in smoke. Plate of chips ruined. Yes, but you know, Viv, you really shouldn't have removed those batteries from the smoke alarm, should you? Smoke alarm? I thought that was the thing that told me when my toast was ready. <laughs> no, Viv. Things like chips and toast are highly flammable. Whilst we're on the subject of fire hazards, that head of yours, how much hairspray are you using on it? Oh, three cans in the morning, three cans at night. Why? Well, it's highly flammable. Oh, well, Harry, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest? Well, from now on, we'd like you to wear this asbestos hat. <laughs> Loose petrol? <laughs> Rotten right health and safety. What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm just sorting through some leftover fireworks. Why? But look at you. <laughs> oh. Yes. yes. Surely a man of your age knows the health risks associated with smoking. <laughs> Just look at them. They must be crackers. A double-decker bus could be right on top of them and they'd never even see it. Hey, you must be out of your tiny minds. Remember, whenever you cross the road, always use the Green Cross code. Keep looking and keep listening. See you, girls. Alvin Stardust. Well, the... Do you know they've had 17 car crashes here, Harry? I thought they could do with a little bit of help, so I'm working this stretch, and Kevin Keegan's working the patch up by home. Phone. <laughs> be smart, be safe. Hey, you know how you can recreate the closing titles of Emmerdale, right? In the privacy of your own home, all you need is a tray of broccoli, right? <laughs> you, you get the broccoli like this, and you go. Da -da -da -da. Well, tomorrow night sees the release of the new Harry Potter film. Now, I'm not sure about Harry Potter myself. See, in my day, you wanted someone who could solve supernatural conundra. You had Doctor Who, didn't you? Hmm? Well, who's better, Harry Potter or Doctor Who? There's only one way to find out. Fight! <laughs> Now, is it me, or are the gaps between the ad breaks getting shorter and shorter, hmm? <laughs> Join us in part three. <laughs> oh, um, hang on. I'll be right back. Looks a bit like sugar. Winston's wisdom. Believe it or not, my testicles are bigger than his. Winston's wisdom. Welcome back. Now, Channel 5, sorry, 5, is evolving. Yes, yeah, see, it always used to be sex and documentaries about the Nazis. Not anymore. No, no, they've completely cleaned up their act. And I must say, last week, I really enjoyed a programme on New Look 5. Was Hitler gay? <laughs> no! Then, you know what, I remember that old show that he used to have on Channel Fumpf. Sorry, Fumpf. <laughs> Wir kommen, wir kommen, ja. Mit der Apple-Stuhl, ja. Apple-Strudel. Sie lieben Dick? Ja. Sie lieben Dick? Ich liebe Dick, ja. Ein Eik, ein Volk, ein Führer. Talk about Mein Camp. 
So, Adolf Hitler there, beaten in the ratings every week by V. Winston Churchill. <laughs> now, pop stars. Bop, bop, do wah. <laughs> it was the boys' turn. It was the boys' turn again at the weekend, and the great British public got rid of Mikey, the tall, handsome one with a great voice. You're having a laugh, aren't you? <laughs> Most of the ones left are under five foot. <laughs> Mind you, when it comes to coming up with a name for the boy band, they'll be well ahead, won't they? We suggest Short Ass. <laughs> bop, bop, do -ah. <laughs> The other week, one of the lads admitted he was too old for it. You know, I know how you feel, mate. I really do. <laughs> I tell you who is too old for it. Pete Grandad Waterman. <laughs> Just a shout, kid. Doing it, kid. You're through, son. Yes. Well done, kid. Off you go, son. You got through, kid. Off you go, kid. You know why he calls everyone kid or son? Because everyone is younger than him. <laughs> he went down to Portsmouth once to visit the Mary Rose and was surprised to learn that it has sunk. That's how old he is. <laughs> right? He went on Friends Reunited and Moses got him back in touch with him. <laughs> That's how old he is. You know, he cries every time he sees a fossil because he remembers it when it was running around. <laughs> That's how old he is. <laughs> and while we're on the subject, what was he doing with those big pads of paper? If you see me walking down the street, staring at the sky, dragging my two feet. Well, we got hold of one of them, look, and look, look at this, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> He's got problems, basically. <laughs> He's so old, his premiums went up after the Great Fire of London. That's how old he is. <laughs> It's so annoying, though, isn't it, to have to wait to find out what happens in the soaps. So we thought we'd use this Ouija board to try to contact the other world, <laughs> see if they can predict what happens. Ouija board, Ouija board, Ouija board. Would you help me? <laughs> I am the ghost of EastEnders. <laughs> It's Lou Beale. <laughs> Take a seat, darling. Now, Lou, you look troubled. Oh, well, Harry, you see, I'm worried about my Pauline's friendship with Private Pike. Give it time, Lou. <laughs> Give it time. Now, tell us, what are your predictions for next week's oh. EastEnders? Wow, watching the tweenies. Little Louise gets overexcited. And she burps up a rusk. <laughs> Sounds a bit of a quiet week, Lou. Well, you can only have so many fires, Harry. You're absolutely right. It's the ghost of EastEnders past there. Whoa. Hold up the Ouija board. BBC Two have got a new series, The Entertainers, which follows favourites like Leo Sayer and Tony Blackburn. And don't you just hate it when things aren't clearly marked for you? Things like, I don't know, well, for instance, where the entrance is. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Tony. No, Tony, it's, it's, it's on the seafront, Tony. <laughs> no, no, go round the front, what? Tony. It's on the... No, you can't get in that way. No, so get in this way. No, you can't get in that way. Go... <laughs> it, it's on the seafront. No, no, go around the, go around the front, Tony. Right, the... Yeah, go around the front. <laughs> now, I don't know whether you saw Russian Roulette in the week, did you? Hmm? It was a one-off special hosted by Rona Cameron off of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It's a kind of uh, I'm a Celebrity, Shoot Me, I'm Slowing You Down. <laughs> It's a chance for celebrities to prove they're not as dumb as the characters they play. Which MP has a seeing eye dog called Lucy? Bruce. The blind fella. <laughs> <laughs> if you get it wrong, you go through a hole in the floor. Jono, when you're ready, pull that lever. It's plunge time. Don't Good luck, everybody. <laughs> The problem is, we've got the studio below them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's John O'Coleman! Harry! Hi. Sorry about that. I, 
how do I get back to the other studio? Because you, you need to go through the door and up, and, and up the stairs. Okay, Johnny. then I'll, I'll be on my way. But be before you go, yeah. Johnny, you've lost a hell of a lot of weight on that fit club, haven't you? Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, I've lost uh, nearly five stones, so I'm pretty happy with it. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, looking at you there, Johnny. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if I could lift you now. <laughs> oh, look, I know. I, 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 Shall I? I have a go if can you I? want. I don't know if you can. I, I bet you I get any opportunity for a little hike. <laughs> no, no, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. next year. Yeah. OK, well, lovely to meet you. <laughs> Through the door and up the stairs. Bye, everybody. John O'Connor there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, just time now for a round-up of the top gossip magazines. Uh, it's, it's around the sea. It's on the seafront, Tony. It's on the. <laughs> it's on the. It's on the seafront. Dear, oh dear. Uh, the top glosses. Yeah, we've got hello here, Diana. What she really thought. We've got there. Uh, okay, going with celebrity uh, mums and babies. Uh, and now magazine. They're going with the big Barrymore exclusive, which is basically. Uh, I've had it off with Hitler as well. <laughs> to sing us out, ladies and gentlemen. Penny, off the cruise ship! Our love is like a ship on the ocean Sailing with a cup of coal on the ocean Said I'd like to know where you got the notion I'm having children!